All the low-carb creamers out there frustrate me, all right, because they either have carrageenan in it, they either have a bunch of guar gums, a bunch of other thickeners, a bunch of emulsifiers. It's like usually you look at nut milks, things like that, and those can be pretty bad in the way of emulsifiers, but when you're talking about a creamer, you're trying to make it thick, so you have thickeners. But there aren't a whole lot of thickener ingredients that are out there that are approved that are decent. So when you go to the store, you run into that problem. So I figured, okay, for those that want to make a creamer, this is a way that you can do it. Now, I'm gonna be using an almond cow. Okay, now almond cow is a machine that allows me to like combine ingredients and basically make a nut milk, or in this case, a creamer. You could use a, uh, a food processor, but you'd have to let everything soak for a little while. So, you know, full disclaimer, I'm not forcing anyone to buy this, but I will say it does make it a lot easier, okay? And I'll kind of explain how you can do it otherwise. So this is really cool. So what I have here is hazelnuts. There's a big reason why uh, hazelnuts are used in coffee. Because of the flavor, it usually cuts some of the acidity of coffee. So it's a great flavor, but I'm using it for a different reason. Okay, hazelnuts are one of the only nuts that are rich in soluble fiber. Okay, their fatty acid profile isn't perfect. They are skewed a little bit towards omega-6s, but that's gonna be the case with any nut. But the soluble fiber is very powerful when it comes down to short-chain fatty acid production, which is what we really want. Especially if you're doing low carb, you have to take care of the gut because you're not typically getting some of the starches that will allow the gut to flourish a little bit more. So soluble fibers become even more important. Okay, so I have one cup here. Okay, then I have a little less than a quarter cup of chia. Now the reason I'm using chia, soluble fiber, yes, omega-3, kind of, but really that is my thickener. So you'll see when I get there. Okay, then I have about a third of a cup of hemp seeds. Now that's gonna kind of fill the gaps. And the reason I'm using hemp is just because it's got a little bit of protein in it. Okay, it's got that methionine in it, which is the sulfur containing aminos that are very important when it comes down to just full spectrum essential amino acids. So I'm getting a little bit of protein out of it. Okay, and then I've got some other stuff which I'll explain as I go. So using this almond cow, so I'll go ahead and I'll take this lid off. I have already put in the minimum amount of water in this, okay? So there's a minimum line, but in this particular case, if you're doing it, I'd probably do about a pint of water because we want it to be thick, okay? We don't want it to come out like a pure almond milk. And then what I go, as I go ahead and take the filter basket, I'm taking one cup of the hazelnuts. I'm taking a little bit here. This is about a half a cup or so, uh, or excuse me, about a third a cup of hemp, hemp hearts. And then I have my chia kind of shake it up a little bit in the filter basket, okay? And then again, okay, so what you could do if you weren't using the almond cow is you'd put this in a food processor with like a couple of tablespoons of water to make it kind of mix up and puree, and then you'd want to go ahead and add some extra water after that and let it sit in the fridge. So it complicates it a little bit. I would recommend that you use the almond cow. It does make it a little bit easier. Nice and tight on there. And then what I would always recommend is tighten it up a little bit more here using the filter basket, which can allow you to there we go. Get it a little extra tight. Uh, for Almond Cow, they are a sponsor on this channel, so the full disclaimer on that. But they've also given a really cool deal. So if you use the code THOMAS15, you can save 15 bucks off of one of these. So when it comes down to it, if you do decide to make your own almond milk or make your own creamers, if you model it out, you end up saving a ton of money because you're not having to spend $5 every time you get an almond milk. You just make your own almond milk. So I've gotten in the habit of doing that, which is awesome. But with creamers, it takes it to a whole different level. But I'll show you something that's super cool that comes as a result of this. After I make a creamer, I'm left with the pulp of everything that I made and I can use that pulp as an oatmeal, which is super cool, like a keto-friendly oatmeal. And that's almost just as good as being able to use the creamer or the almond milk. Okay, so in this case, simple, press the cow start button. Okay, so once that green light is totally illuminated, that means it's all good. Okay, but I have some other things that I need to add in there, okay? Now this is a little bit of an off-label use, I suppose, because I'm gonna actually kind of mix it again, because I find that if I add extra components like this, I need to add it to the liquid rather than just to the uh, ingredients that I'm mixing. So in this particular case, here, I'm just gonna kind of slide this over a little bit, and I'm going to add, whoops, I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of cinnamon to this whole mix. And the reason that I'm doing this is for blood sugar modulation, okay? So there are a number of studies with cinnamon, uh, one that was published in Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism that demonstrated that when five grams of cinnamon was added before a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test, it improved uh, the ability to process that glucose a little bit more. So there's something called methyl hydroxy chalcone polymer. So in the morning, it's good to kind of modulate that blood glucose a little bit. Plus caffeine from coffee can sometimes trigger a little bit of a blood sugar spike. So if you can kind of modulate that a little bit with some cinnamon, it's always a good thing, but it's not a necessity. Okay, and then in this case, this is just me. I'm just adding a couple drops of monk fruit sweetener. You don't have to do that. 
Uh, it's a mess to do on video. I already put about a quarter of a vanilla bean in there to get that vanilla bean, uh, that vanilla flavor, but also activate the vanilloid receptors that give me a little bit more uh, benefit in terms of catecholamines. Now, another thing that I want to add, you can totally do this, totally up to you. I'm just going to add, I've got my, this is a half a teaspoon. I'm going to probably do a total of, actually, I'm just going to eyeball it for the sake of this video probably about two tablespoons of MCT oil. That way it's gonna mix up and get me some of that benefit. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix it one more time. Thing is with a creamer, I do wanna mix it again because I do want some more of those soluble fibers to come through. So if you're using a food processor or anything like that, you may wanna mix it again even after you add the liquid. That's just gonna make it so that, again, you're really extracting some of those fibers to make it thicker. All right, so that's all thickened up and that's all good to go. Now. One of the things that you have to pay attention to, since this has chia in it, in order for that chia to gelatinize and do its job, we need to go ahead and we need to pour this into a cup and we need to put it in the fridge for about five minutes. Now, normally you're gonna keep it in the fridge, so it's gonna thicken up nice, but for me to showcase what it's really like and the viscosity and the thickness of it, I'm gonna have to put it in the fridge for about five minutes. So, and just a quick reminder, again, a big thank you to Almond Cow, and again, use that link down below, code THOMAS15, save 15 bucks off of an Almond Cow if you wanna try it, okay? See, right now it's pretty thin, but because we have the chia in there, oops, it's gonna get quite a bit thicker. You can already see it's thicker towards the bottom already. Bummer on that, but that's all right. Go ahead and wipe that down, put it in the fridge, let it set up for a little bit, and then I'll show you how it mixes with coffee in just a second. And in the interim, I will show you how you can use that oatmeal. So if you did use a food processor, after you've blended it, you'd have to strain it through, probably not a cheesecloth, but you'd want to use something that's a little bit uh, like a, some kind of strainer that's really, really thin. Because you do want some of the fiber and some of the kind of the, the granules that you're going to get from the nuts. But again, with a food processor, it definitely adds a level of complexity. It's a lot harder to do. So if you strain it through cheesecloth, you're really eliminating the thickness. In this case, we still get some of the thickness here. Take a look at this. So this is going to strain a little bit more. See how it's like kind of thinning out and it's draining some of the liquid. But as this thickens up and some of the liquid drains, this is going to turn into something that I could actually eat. So if I were to go ahead and pour it in a cup, just to show you, look how thick that is. That is totally a keto friendly oatmeal and it's only going to get thicker. So now I have chia, I have hazelnut, I have hemp, and I have it flavored with a little bit of MCT. Look at this. It's delicious. It's almost like tastes kind of like cream of rice. So as a side effect of making a creamer, I ended up with a keto friendly oatmeal that I could totally have. And if I wanted to make it a little sweeter, anything like that, I could add some more monk fruit. Again, totally a side effect, just a casualty of making something really good. All right, so this has been in there for about five minutes. Now, mind you, if you left it in the fridge overnight and you put it in a container where you'd use it more, I just wanted to be able to use a glass container to show you, or a glass cup to show you. So again, you want some of the fiber. You can also see some of the vanilla bean that's in there, which is super awesome. So I have just a little bit of uh, coffee here. I'm just gonna add this just as my creamer, and just to give you an idea, look at that. Perfect, just like a regular hazelnut creamer. that is delicious. And you can make it as thick as you want. Like if you want it a little bit thicker, or if you wanted to make it an actual dairy product, you could add heavy cream to it as well. Heavy cream is gonna thicken it up a little bit more. You're still getting the benefit of the soluble fiber. You're still getting all those benefits there. Wow, that tastes so good. That tastes really good. So you're able to get all those benefits there. You're just adding a little bit of the heavy cream to give it a little bit more thickness. Again, modulate the amount of water that you use to kind of increase the thickness and the viscosity. It just makes a lot more sense. You can make your own creamer, have a little bit of fun with it. That way, if you just want to level it up and not have to deal with the carrageenan and the thickeners, you're good to go. So as always, make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out Almond Cow down below and a big thank you to them and use that code THOMAS15 and I will see you tomorrow. And I want some oatmeal. I think the oatmeal might be the better part. Maybe I'll just add coffee to my oatmeal. <laughs>